Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. We have come together in the presence of God to witness and bless the joining together of Aaron Spear and Jasmine Shinwald in holy matrimony. Teresa, as proxy for Jasmine, will you have this man Aaron to be your husband to live together in the covenant of marriage? Will you love him, comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health and forsaking all others, be faithful to him for as long as you both shall live? I will. Rachel, as proxy for Aaron, will you have this woman Jasmine to be your wife to live together in the covenant of marriage? Will you love her, comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health and forsaking all others, be faithful to her for as long as you both shall live? I will. I would say as a proxy, I've been officially married probably over 3,000 times. I mean, let's be honest, it's odd. Of course, every little girl's dream is having that white dress and walking down the aisle and being given away and then saying I do in your vows. But when I got the email notification saying, congratulations, you just got married, it felt a bit odd, honestly. It sounds quite unbelievable, you know, if you've never heard of it, oh, two people are gonna get married for you. I pronounce Aaron and Jasmine to be husband and wife. I first heard the news it was the first first thing I asked I was like well what date like when were we married and like I said it was it was December 26th but it was already the 27th in Guam and I don't know it was kind of this weird feeling like I missed my own wedding day because not only I wasn't there but the date was different it was yeah. it was weird one day comes the email congratulations you were married now <laughs> which I don't know, it's a bit unromantic. I was in Southern Italy actually on holiday with my family. That's my wedding day and a wedding night spent in a room with a five-year-old kid, which, oh well. <laughs> it isn't necessarily important that a female stand in for the bride and a male stand in for the groom. The proxies can be of any gender. A lot of times we naturally do a man, woman for bride and groom, but there are many times when we will have two of the same sex um, for couples that are not of the same sex. The double proxy marriage in Montana came about in about the 1860s. It was Victorian times. We had people out here in Montana who were busy mining, logging, whatever. The women were on the East Coast. It was improper to send a woman out here to be with a guy, so they would correspond by mail, but it was still too improper to come out unless they were married. So they'd be married by proxy, and uh, that's what started this. It's been on the books ever since. Armed Forces Proxy Marriage. I sure did, thank you so much. How can I help you? <laughs> Yeah, it's actually a thing. <laughs> um, uh, and, and really, it's, it's people in your situation. Yeah, not a, I can have you married by Friday without any problems. And I was looking for ways to get married, and this kind of popped up. We get a lot of calls of people saying, this can't be true. I've heard about it. It has to be a scam. So we actually met online. I was in South Carolina as part of my Navy training, and she was in Florida going to school. We knew we wanted to be married, and our circumstances didn't really allow for that to happen the way we wanted. Some of my friends and family 
from the start were a bit apprehensive seeing how we hadn't even known each other all that long. I was 18 years finishing up school and you're gonna marry this American soldier and you're not even gonna marry him in person. We're not gonna be there, no dress, nothing. I was stationed at the U.S. Embassy in Brazil uh, while I was in the Army, and Laura and I met um, during my tour there, Ooh, going on almost 10 years ago. Somebody had told me about this process, so I Googled it, and I came across a company called Armed Forces Proxy Marriage. My family and friends were definitely, especially my mother, trying to understand the whole process of the double proxy marriage at first. We'll tell them about the process, that it's not an internet marriage, that it's a legal marriage. Your marriage certificate is exactly the same as if you came to Montana and got married. There's nothing different about it. The only difference is you physically don't come here, which is why it is for our military only. It doesn't apply to anyone else. With the circumstances of him being in the military, I'm a European citizen, it, it would have just been difficult to even live together. We kind of had to find an alternative, and the double proxy was just perfect. And now they can actually be together, which wasn't going to be possible. I mean, that's one thing about the military. If you're a girlfriend, you're nobody. If you're a fiancé, you're nobody. They don't recognize you unless you're married. Um, so, you know, it allows them not only for insurance and for housing, but they actually get to be together. Like in our situation, it would have been really hard to do a traditional wedding, and we really just wanted to be together, and so having the possibility of a double proxy just made our lives a lot easier. I was going back to Brazil, I was trying to get back there about once every three months. It was very, very costly. It's a very good chance that we would have never made this work. Um, long distance is tough. Over all the marriages we do, uh, I think these are just young kids in love. These people aren't earning a lot of money. It can be very, very good for them. You know, fast forward two weeks later and I present this option to my bride, who is, you know, 6,000 miles away. and. She laughed, as she's doing right now. Um, That's easy. I love it. <laughs> she thought it was a great idea, but she, of course, the first thing that the, the first question that always comes up is, is it legal? So we're uh, driving to the attorney's office at this point. Montana law stipulates that an attorney must present proxy marriages to the court on behalf of our clients. It must go through an attorney. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye now. Thanks. One document for each of you called an affidavit in support of proxy marriage needs to have your signature notarized. Have you ever had a notary done before? You have to go to a lawyer or a notary and just sign the document in front of them with their presence and they sign that they witnessed you doing this. Just means that, oh, I wasn't, I wasn't forced at gunpoint to put my signature there by somebody. There is only one state in the United States where this process is legal and that's in the state of Montana. I wonder why that other one didn't charge. I don't know. Might have a pin missing somewhere. Who's this? That's my sous chef. Hey, Cooper. Hi, sous chef. We didn't decide to move to Montana. I asked Teresa if we could move to Montana, and she said, well, you know, it's your midlife crisis, so, uh, uh, we'll play along with it for a while. So he went on a road trip for probably a month. Uh, Utah, Wyoming, Idaho, Montana, and he said, I will know it when I get there. Didn't know where I was, and I said, I'm home. So I called Teresa, said, please fly up. And she looked around and said, it's beautiful. And I just remember standing in the forest, looking at trees, going, oh, all right. I mean, I couldn't visualize a home. It was just a forest, but he could. When uh, 
they described how the actual ceremony went. They described, I guess, the landscape of Montana mountains speckled against the background, uh, probably pine trees and everything else, big blue skies. You're cheesy. I, I would think it's much more, you know, formulaic because we don't really know who our proxies are, but I'd imagine it's just, oh yeah, they're going there. Maybe it's do you person standing in for a person, take person to be your lawfully wedded wife or husband. Our fee is $750 for the proxy marriage, and we have a five-day guarantee that we'll have you married five business days from that point. During a typical proxy marriage, there's three people present, uh, a minister or efficient, and two proxies. Anyone can be a proxy um, for a wedding, so we have several that we use. We have some that are regulars and some that we just use um, occasionally. Rachel is you know, somebody that we use much more often. Um, she's a very big part of the business. When we go away, she takes care of the business for us. My husband, Steve, I don't think he thought it was weird at all because in this, I'm not getting married. I'm, I'm standing in for someone because they're not here and they can't say the words themselves. I'm saying the words they would be saying. So I, he and I no way feel that I'm like getting married, you know, on different days of the week. <laughs> The average wedding takes less than five minutes. If any of our couples have someone that they would like to stand in for them, we're more than happy to allow that. Uh, a month ago, one of our uh, servicemen's parents happened to live within 10 miles from here. We met at a halfway point, and the mother and father stood in for the bride and groom as their proxies. In the beginning, it feels a little strange to have Tom, my husband, sort of marrying me through proxy to a good friend of mine. And I think in the beginning it did feel a little awkward and sort of uncomfortable and you really listen to the words and um, I don't know how you felt about it. Now I, I, it doesn't affect me at all. I mean, I never thought it was marrying Joe, but it did strike me as being odd. We've come together in the presence of God. Teresa, as proxy for Elizabeth, will you have this man, Michael, be your husband? I will. He's groom your bride. Okay. Joseph, as proxy for Ryan, will you have this woman, Jacqueline, to be your wife? I will. I will. I will. I will. I will. What are you talking about? Will you love her, comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health by the power vested in me by the state of Montana, I pronounce Ryan and Jacqueline to be husband and wife. It, it definitely wasn't the white wedding I was assuming was going to happen. But I think all of the same feelings were still there. We get the certified copies of the marriage certificate back from the court. We will scan and email them to you. Either way, you're stateside, you're going to have it two days in your mail. And then we received this, this beautiful um, certificate of marriage that was issued by the state of Montana. So if you look at this, there's nothing on it that says double proxy marriage and we nothing. weren't there. It's a legal marriage license and marriage certificate. Boys, little man, bring the ball, Clancy. When Teresa and I were married, it was not too different than uh, these proxy marriages. We were actually present, mm -hmm. but uh, it was about as sparse as far as the population of people who were there, we had to go to LA County and get um, marriage license done there, then drove to my cousin's house. Her husband was a minister. He did the ceremony, and also there was my other cousin and uh, aunt and uncle. <laughs> the intimate. That was very intimate. Sweet. <laughs> it was great. Turned around, drove back, went to Cheesecake Factory for dinner, went to a movie, whatever it was, I can't remember. I was going to ask if you remembered no, what I the don't. movie was, because you had I remembered what. Yeah, once. I had at one point. And, right. Uh, I'm sure it was n not a chick flick, usually. You know, it was an action movie, It had to be an action film. Uh -huh. and, uh, mm -hmm. and, we, and we have one photograph somewhere that someone took with probably a brownie camera, you know, faded. <laughs> what I didn't realize at the time was that um, 
I didn't think my mother, I didn't think it was any big deal. I'd had a big wedding, you know, in my 20s, and I thought she would be grateful not to have to make the trip. And boy, we heard about it last time she was here. It's been 27 years, and she, for Christmas when she was here, she laid down know, some. Don't forget. Yeah. <laughs> she threw it out there, like, and I had no idea she was offended by it. I, I arrived in Brazil. Laura met me at the airport and we literally went directly to a jewelry store. We bought wedding rings and then Laura has a very good friend who is a pastor of, of, in a church and we went to meet with Laura's friend who blessed our rings and did sort of an informal official religious ceremony there in her office. Well, we never actually did anything special to, you know, commemorate that we got married. I remember we, we um, ordered our rings online actually and the day they came when we exchanged the rings and put them on each other we um, just you know said our promises and vows to each other but that was in our living room all in private. <laughs> Ryan. Our wedding was well I think it's the epitome of a Montana wedding. I wore cowboy boots I got thrown up on a hay bale for pictures. <laughs> we were in the middle of a huge hay field. Uh, it was a beautiful day and had the Flathead Lake in the background and over 300 people attended. And I feel like a proxy marriage is no different and just as important as a wedding you have at a church or in a field like we were. Montana, it really is a destination wedding location. It's beautiful, has, the summers are wonderful. And so people can spend a lot of money on a wedding here. And I understand that a party is very fun. Paying that much for everybody else to go to a party and get free food when it should be about us, in my opinion, isn't even all that worth it. I mean, there, there's, I'm sure there's traditionalists that, that think what we did is kind of crazy, but on the other hand, we just it, it, we just needed the, the paper, the, the legal paperwork, so that we could get on with the rest of it. Laura and I live uh, a very good life because of the steps that we chose to take. She's my best friend, she's my partner in life, and it didn't really matter to me, you know, what paperwork or what setting it took place in. I just, I knew that she was the one for me and I wanted to be with her. I guess getting older probably has, I have a different perspective on wedding and marriage than I did younger. For a lot of people, you know, it's about impressing their friends and family and, you know, putting on a show and, and, and I get that and it's beautiful. This is my first year as a retired wedding planner. I have planned very major weddings. And I wonder sometimes when I'm planning these big events and there's two and three and $500,000 weddings, the rate of divorce is not gonna be any lower just because you spent $500,000 on your wedding. In the end, it depends on the couple themselves and not, not the way you actually got married. Whether you spend $500,000, that has no impact on if you're actually compatible and able to willing to make it last. We pass this package here. We're not gonna play with that. I know everybody's circumstances are different and for our servicemen and women being deployed or going into basic and they realize they want to be married before they go or for their family they want to get married while they're being deployed, this is just such a great opportunity, a wonderful opportunity for them to be able to get married while they maybe can't be there physically. A lot of times shortly after the marriage or maybe after the first baby, they'll send a picture um, the Facebook page seems to be where people reach out the most. I mean, when I read those, oh, it's been six years and we're two babies and it's been this, you know, I, because I often wondered in the beginning, honestly, about the business. You know, I, I never wanted to enter into this um, thinking, 
gosh, they're going to get married and two weeks later they're all going to regret it. And you know, that it was going to be anything more than marriage should be. And after doing it all these years, you realize it's no different than getting married any other way. You can order pretty much everything else online. You can order a car, pizza. So you order your way. <laughs> We'd like to renew our vows at some point after the children are a little bit bigger in Montana and do it properly. <laughs> um, everybody from Armed Forces Proxy Marriages will be invited, including the proxies that married us the first time. <laughs>